need all the help we can get today as we are in part three of a message uh, really backed by popular demand. I mean, you, I wasn't going to do the third part of this, and you guys, uh, you know, made it happen, so I blame it all on you. So, <laughs> Father, we pray that you'd bless this message that is challenging, no doubt, and has proven to be in the two earlier series, uh, challenging to our thinking and to our comfort zone, and yet there it is, right in the Bible. So, Father, give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us, the church, we pray in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Put your eyes to the screens, if you would. Well, I became a UFO expert, but not on purpose. I was an amateur astronomer before I became a professional astronomer, so every university where I served, they said, you have to handle all the UFO reports. So, and about 99% of what people would report to me as UFOs, I could explain as natural phenomena, a hoax, uh, or secret government military activity. Uh, But there's a 1% residual that falls in a different category. And uh, these would be UFO phenomena uh, that observers report violating the laws of physics. On the other hand, they leave evidence indicating that they're real phenomena. And that, I think, explains why you have a lot of scientists and skeptics saying, uh, this doesn't exist because they, they come from a worldview that doesn't permit the existence of non-physical reality. Uh, but as a Christian, as a believer in the inerrancy of the Bible, I do believe in the uh, existence of non-physical reality because uh, the Bible tells us God created uh, two different species of intelligent life, one that's constrained by the physics of the universe and one that is not. And we're talking about humans that are indeed constrained by the dimensions and laws of physics of the universe and angels who are not. And these angels live in a different dimensional realm, but God has given them the power to come in temporarily into our realm. Well, the voice of Hugh Ross, valuable to where we're going today. Church, let's all stand together and we're going to do our part three of our series titled In the Days of Deception. By the way, before we read, I need to uh, make some, um, something clear. Uh, this just happened to uh, take place. Guys, um, get ready to show the slide of the book. Here's what's not happening here. Some time ago, um, I did a series on deception. It was a, l- a lengthy series, and it was titled In the Days of Deception. And I spelled days, D-A-Z-E, intentionally. And uh, that caught the interest of some publishers who wanted to make that uh, a book. I wasn't interested in doing a book. And then they they said, can we buy the title from you then? And I thought, well, that's interesting. If they want to buy the title, then maybe it should be a book. (laughs) And uh, with the wonderful uh, people at Harvest House and their encouragement, uh, we embarked upon the writing of of that book, which will come out. This will come out in February. It's all done. Uh, but the publishers, I thought this was kind of cool, they've decided to hold it uh, because they want it to be released just before, listen carefully, just before the primary election cycle, but it has nothing to do with politics. But it has everything to do with deception in all areas. But uh, part of the COVID thing and part of the, uh, the whole dynamic of where we're at today in our world, the last three or four years, I thought it would be appropriate that you and I would wake up to the fact that we are, in fact, living in the days of deception, how to discern truth from cultural lies. Um, but I love, I, I, I love what God has done with the Harvest House publishers. Uh, we are freaking out with happiness and encouragement right now because it's not been officially uh, released. But what happened was I made a post about it a couple of weeks ago that it was soon coming, and I wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> and so what happened was people began to look for it. And as of last night, it hit number one in Amazon pre-orders. <laughs> so that's crazy. So that's pretty fun. The publisher is going to release it, though, pre-orders officially later. You can get it uh, pre order It will be shipped to you in February. But um, one of the most important things I'm excited about is look who the Ford has been written by. Yeah. Yeah. 
He's been so great, and he's been so kind to me, Secretary Mike Pompeo. Um, and so just don't confuse uh, what we're doing now with this book. Uh, what we're talking about now, these last three weeks, has nothing to do with the, with the book itself. But the title, uh, I stole the title from myself <laughs> to put on this series. I hope, hopefully that fixes some of the confusion. So today we are going to read a montage of scripture. So we've done this before, not often, but we've done this before because we're doing this topical message titled In the Days of Deception, part three. Um, we're going to read this montage of Bible scriptures. You will see why in a moment a key word will begin to pop out and become most prominent. So let's look to the screens. I'll read what is called verse one. Now remember, you're going to recognize these verses, but these have been assembled uh, for the topic. You, if you'd pick it up in verse 2. When Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, do you not see all these Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. So this becomes a private briefing now on what he had said publicly to the crowds. And they asked amazing questions here. Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for, or, uh, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words, for the time will come when people will not embrace sound doctrine, but rather they will pursue teachers and analyze their ears. Let no one deceive you by any means. For the day of the Lord will not come unless the falling away comes first. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. I think you've picked up on that word. Exactly. Deceived. To be deceived. As we pointed out last time in part one of our series, the word deceived in the Greek language means this. Whatever causes you to wander. Think of that. To go astray. The word means to be led away or to become misguided. Some sort of, uh, listen, some sort of information given to you, planted, uh, read, taken in, pondered, considered. Deception is, is everywhere, but you and I are supposed to be responsible enough to test everything that we hear. Church family, listen. It is absolutely incumbent upon you as a believer. You own a Bible. And if you don't, listen, it, even if you're an atheist and you don't own a Bible, you still have access to the entire Bible free on your device. Everybody does around the world. The Bible. And the Bible is the book that exposes deception. Tells you how to see it. Tells you how to smell it. Tells you what to do with it. Deception is so dangerous that according to God, the Old Testament Testament prophets that when somebody prophesied wrong or in error, they were to be what? Stoned, put to death. Why? Why? Such an extreme response because they would speak falsehood in the name of religious authority and thereby leading souls away, here's the reason why we should care, to an eternal destination apart from Christ. It's not that somebody uh, misled you or deceived you, it's that the end is eternal destruction, deception. And according to the Bible, 
all of that is true. I love what Hugh Ross said, that we as Christians, even though we may be astrophysicists, we believe in the creation of God, that there is the physical material universe and there is the immaterial universe, that God created both of those entities. And he relegated it simply down to us and angels. And that's a good place to start. So we're going to be talking about some pretty heavy stuff. By the way, uh, if you are not here for part one and part two, you're going to be at a great disadvantage today, seriously. You're going to need to study those two uh, and then get into this one, or it will make better sense if you do. Uh, but it's, it's, it's heavy stuff. And it, remember how this was all birthed, you guys. Uh, last month, the United States Congress held a hearing, and now that is continuing, I I say continuing, we now know a lot that has happened since those hearings, uh, but um, we responded, I responded to you and to what was out there, and that is uh, people were saying, talking all around the world, oh my gosh, there's aliens, and, and some of them have landed, and they're splashed in the water, and they've got body parts, and all this stuff that's coming out in Congress, and it's happening right now, and I thought, oh, that's just going to blow over until I started hearing some pastors talk about it and tell us things like, don't worry, these are, these are creatures that haven't fallen. That's why they're so amazing. They haven't fallen like we have. They're still sinless. We're the ones that sinned. We can't do what they can do. And so maybe they're here to help us. When I heard that, I just flipped my lid. I just thought, that's it. So pause on Romans for a moment. We got to dive in and answer crazy before it took a stronghold, and um, and so uh, to lighten it up a little bit, I don't know if this I don't know if this lightens it up at all. Come to think about it, but uh, we intermingled with you, rightfully so. What what uh, the Bible says, what's going on in the world around us, what history taught and teaches, and what is being observed in our universe today, or at least reported to be observed, and certainly the fact of artificial intelligence which is increasing, by the way, and I'm having to deal with artificial intelligence now. I don't know if you are, uh, but I have been sent or given things uh, that are AI, and I don't appreciate it, to be honest with you. When somebody sends something, first, one of the first dead giveaways is that there is no way that a human being can write a sentence or a paragraph that perfect. It feels funny. It's too perfect. The grammar is perfect. The word usage is perfect. And you know it's wrong. You, it's, it's, it's beautiful, but it's not normal. You can feel it, that human side of it. We are flawed creatures, and yet we operate in a world that's flawed, but we can relate to flawed. I'm flawed, you're flawed, we're all flawed. And, um, but yet we can relate to each other. And uh, so this is to lighten it up. Uh, go ahead and take a look at this painting. It's, um, that just sold for $10,000. $10,000. bucks. you know who painted it? A computer painted it. AI did this. It's the first time an AI painting has been sold. AI is being used now in all kinds of areas. We'll touch on that more as we get into this, but again, to lighten it up, I've got some responses from some friends that we are, I'm in a huge uh, pastor's um, text thread, uh, and here's what I got. So first one's from San Diego. I, I can't read them all, but uh, excellent word, Jack, these last two Sundays. Now I've got to bone up on what and how to tell my flock so that they are prepared for these coming days. I appreciate that. That's a, that's a nice answer. Here's another one from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brother, you said things that I've always thought of and understood from Scripture when I read the Bible for itself on its own, but just could not bring myself to ever addressing it in a message publicly. I'm going to preach it now and blame you for it later. <laughs> That's great. Here's one from a brother on our thread from Des Moines, Iowa. You mentioned how the ancient Hebrew scholars viewed Genesis chapter 6 as well as other rabbinical teachings. I found it fascinating to learn that, the, that most of the early church fathers also 
taught that the daughters of men and the sons of God were an unholy, unnatural union. It is an uns unsettling fact that what you said is true. Jesus said it's going to be like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, like the days of Noah. Well, brother, that would certainly explain a lot about where we're at today and where we're heading. And then one brother from Hawaii said, <laughs> the best one, brah, better you than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, I love that. <laughs> Thanks to Dr. J. Vernon McGee, who tells the story, and I, I quote, of a little boy who loved going over to visit his grandparents' which, uh, house, which he did uh, just about every day. To him, their house was like walking into a museum filled with answers. The little boy would ask about Papa's war medals. He'd ask about the black and white photos of a much younger Mimi and Papa taken on some tropical beach far away. It was like he was walking through time itself, and he loved every step of it. As normal, at 12 o'clock, every noon hour, that little boy loved to go and stand before the massive grandfather's clock in the hallway. The sound of it filled the house, and so he stood there counting out the chimes, feeling each vibration against his chest. One, two, three, the sound of it was imposing. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, the clock just kept chiming until he took off running. Shocked and being a bit scared, shouted, Mimi, Papa, it's never been this late before. <laughs> and I love that. Church has never been this late before for all of us. You and I are living this moment today, and we've never been this far down the calendar of time. And yet everything that's going on in the world around us speaks to us, if you know your Bible, of the Lord's return and of the end time events getting ready to be launched upon the world scene. It's quite amazing. Preface all of this today with words of comfort. John chapter 14, beginning in verse 1. You guys know it well here at this church. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be shaken. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions or dwelling places, and if it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. I love that. That's the rapture verse, and I hope it happens today. If it doesn't, this is what we're supposed to do next. Matthew 28, 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. That means teach them the Bible. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, or behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And all God's people said, amen. amen to that. You well know that the nature of biblical revelation, that is the Bible, is relevant always. God's prophetic word is always relevant to its age or to eternity itself. And I've told you before, and I'll say it again, well over 25% of your Bible that you can hold in your hand is committed to future events. The Bible's never been wrong. It will never be wrong. God gave it. And so with an incredible magnitude and level of deception breaking loose in our world around us today, some of it we're dealing with where it's, we would call it benign. It's not benign. No deception is innocent. Don't get me wrong. But there's deception that you and I have got to put up with. So, so here's one right now. So if you get a cold right now, apparently, you better go get tested. I got news for you. If you get a cold, don't get tested. You can go to CVS and get your own private test, but don't run to your doctor and give them numbers to put up on CNN and uh, shut us down again, because that's what's coming. The new, uh, uh, the election variant of COVID is loose now. <laughs> it's loose and it's coming. And uh, in the middle of this month, President Biden is going to announce uh, what closures we'll be taking and masking and, and all that stuff that's coming. Oh, boy. Listen, that's part of a benign deception. I say benign. We all hate it. But it's, that's benign compared to the scale of what we're talking about, where our Congress is in investigating actual bona fide scientific evidence 
by military equipment and, and uh, International Airline Pilots Association of actual strange sightings and phenomenons that are now being called UAPs. Unidentified anomalies or atmospheric changes seems like every week. That A keeps changing. The only thing that doesn't change is the, is the uh, acronym, the letter U. Unidentified. Unidentified was atmospheric phenomenon. Then it was un unidentified um, alien uh, phenomenon. And uh, now it's anomalies. Unidentified anomalies. Well, whatever it is, we're looking at the days of deception. And this is what we saw last time. And that is this, what does every Christ follower know for sure? And this, from this point one and point two, generated a lot of interesting emotions among people, because I, I got reports from people, and some of the people just flat out came up and told me, which was fascinating. But reminding all of you this about this very important fact, in the 21st century, what you're looking at in the Bible, and where you and I live right now, are in complete harmony. Start writing these down. Number one, we saw this before, but by way of review, John 13, 19, Jesus answered this and said, now I tell you before it comes, or before it happens, that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am. Look at your Bible. The word he is an italicized uh, font. It's because the word he doesn't appear in the original Greek language. Jesus simply said, now, I tell you before it comes to pass that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am. It's the name of God, the ego I mean. The, the, the King James translators dropped in he to help you understand what was being said. But it's even stronger if you go with the original Greek language. Jesus is announcing, I'm telling you the future in advance because I'm the one. I know it. Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10, you remember this? For I am God and there is no other. I am God, there's none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done. That's what Jesus just said. And then secondly, last time we saw in the days of deception, is what has the world observed in times past? And this is where everybody got the creeps. And a warning was sent out. Well, that's because a warning was sent out by Jesus back in probably about 35 AD when in Luke's gospel, chapter 17, verse 26, Jesus said, regarding the disciples asking him about the last days and the end of the world, what's it going to be like? Now listen, if you're not a believer today, I, by the way, you have no idea how it excites me to find out that if you're, that you're here or you're watching and you're, you're not a believer that it just gets, gets me so excited, because when I'm when I read what I'm about to read to you, this 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 these statements, this passage is two thousand years old, and yet it's in, it's already ahead of tomorrow's headlines. You got to figure that out, all on your own. Luke seventeen twenty six, and so it was in the days of Noah. Jesus says, "You guys want to know what it's going to be like right before I come back." It's going to be like it was in the days of Noah. Well, that implies that either A, the audience then knew what the days of Noah were like, and they did. They were a bunch of Jews. They knew their scriptures. But Jesus is also requiring that every generation should know about the days of Noah. What was it like when Noah lived? So will it be also in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day Noah that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Life seemed to be going somewhat normal. We just focused on doing this thing. One foot in front of the other, status quo, things continue as they are, but all of a sudden, Noah and his family got inside the ark. Think about the church today, maybe this church today, warning, preaching, teaching, announcing, and the culture can either receive it or not. That's not up to us. I don't care about that. We're just supposed to proclaim truth. What the world does with it is their business. Imagine us getting inside of our ark, so to speak, and uh, before the great flood. Well, in this case, the Lord's going to come and receive his people up and out of here. And so to speak, the door will be closed. But G Jesus said, watch for it. It's going to be like the days of Noah. And the book of Genesis tells us that the days of Noah, the earth was full of violence. 
And it suggests also that what they did was extreme, bizarre, sexual exploits. Unusual. Unnatural. Verse 28, he says, likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, can you imagine having a city named after a sex act? Wow. It rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Jesus said, even so it will be in the day when the Son of Man, speaking of himself, is revealed. So you stop right now as a skeptic and you ask yourself this question. Are the days leaning toward as it was in the days of Noah? Violence, evil. The Bible says that men's imaginations were evil continuously. His imaginations, that's not, his, that's not her or his porn time on the screen. It's in the mind continually. God looks down from heaven. He sees the depravity of man. As it was in the days of Noah, Jesus said, it's going to be like that when I return. And this time together is too short, but I highly recommend that you do your own homework and your own study. You ought to get the book by Henry Morris called The Genesis Record. It's only about that thick, <laughs> but you can fast forward to Genesis chapter 6. He does a great treaty of work. He's not only a scientist, he was a great theologian, great expositor. And then you can go back to about 1835 and read uh, the book, the dissertation, I should say, by Robert Gauvet on the rise and the rise again of the Nephilim by Robert Gauvet. Charles Spurgeon, he was one of uh, Charles Spurgeon's favorite Bible teachers. Genesis chapter 6, we studied this, raised a lot of eyebrows, but there's no way around it. This is what generated, by the way, controversy, uh, not only among congregants, but among other pastors. But I want to remind you, um, I am not practicing right now negative church growth tactics. I'm giving you the truth. And uh, people, pastors, theologians, will squirm and fight and go through incredible gyrations to try to explain this away. Friends, I want you to know I've read them all. Over the last 45 years, I've read them all. There's no other way to put it. Now, it came to pass when men, humans, mankind began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful and they took wives uh, for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit, notice God's response, my spirit shall not uh, strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. That's it. Whatever happened between these, uh, these uh, sons of God and the daughters of men caused God to say, that's it. Time's up. I'm going to wipe this thing clean. Verse 4 says, there were giants on the earth in those days. The word is Nephilim. And also afterward, that is before the flood and after the flood, there were giants. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. We get the word, by the way, out of ancient uh, uh, Sumatran and Babylonian language. We get the word, believe it or not, from men of renown. We get the word heroes. It's rooted in Greek mythology. Greek, of course, being much later on down the road. But uh, whatever this is, there's... There's this uh, sons of God, which in the Old Testament, uh, benign, uh, benign en Elo Elohim, sons of God, always referring to angels, both fallen and holy angels, and the, and the daughters of men regarding uh, females born from mankind. And you have to go study this on your own to be ultimately convinced, but I, I got news for you. Uh, it is as freaky as it sounds. And we've got a lot of assumptions in our lives that say things like this. Wait a minute, you're saying that fallen angels had sex with human females? Yeah, that's what it says. Oh, I, I, I thought they couldn't do that. Where, why did you, why did you think that? Nowhere does the Bible say that they can't. The Bible says that in eternity, we will be like the angels. We will not be given in marriage. Why? We're going to be married to Christ. 
All it says is that angels in heaven are not married. Interesting, right? It does gender some curiosity when every time an angel does appear, they appear, though, as males. Never females in Scripture. It's rather interesting. You say, Jack, this is kind of freaky. Well, I, I know that. That's why we're doing this. Because, listen, there's a blending between what Genesis has to say and what Congress is reporting right now. You see, I don't believe in all of these sightings that we're talking about in all this data that we're watching and watching, watching a device travel through uh, the atmosphere and go into the ocean at 3,000 miles an hour without a splash? Or two F-18 U.S. Navy fighter pilots off the coast of San Diego uh, reach a point called merge plot, which I, le- I had to learn about this. Merge plot is when an unknown aircraft, an enemy aircraft, uh, intersects with you, the fighter pilot, and that is the collision point. And off the coast of California, they had a merge point with two F-18 Hornets as it was being as they were being tracked by the USS Princeton, and they were warning about merge plot, merge plot, you're going to collide. And they went right through merge plot, and there was nothing there. And that the USS Princeton not only tracked it, but when they ordered the two aircraft to go to a cap zone, combat air uh, patrol circuit, as soon as that announcement was made over the radio to those two pilots, 65 miles later... 65 miles away, in one second, that device was there waiting for them to arrive. All on U.S. Air, US Navy uh, data. All being revealed to the United States Congress. What are we talking about here? Are we talking about little green men from Mars? Are we talking about ancient distant travelers that have come from some system? No, we're not. We're talking about demonic deception that is masquerading as aliens visiting from other worlds. Hollywood's obsessed with that. They always have been. But part of the deception, could it be possible that part of the deception has been something that the satanic powers have been laying down for a long time? You say, Jack, why would they do that? Well, number one, to deceive as many souls as possible because you guys just read a moment ago, Jesus said in the last days, don't be deceived. Why? Because if you get deceived... It's an issue between heaven and hell, eternity with God and eternity without God. And God loves you, and he wants you to be in eternity with him. Throughout history, both in the Bible and external, did some great reading this week and read about Chinese history and the giants throughout the area of China in its antiquity, where ancient Chinese historians wrote about giants in their world. Same is true about Central and South America. The Raphaim, the Nephilim, the Arba, the Zazim, the Karnim, the Emim, and the Anakim, all spoken of in the Bible. Jude, turn in, or in your notes, or turn in your Bibles to Jude, chapter 1. Jude 1, verse 5. Jude 1, New Testament, answering to Genesis 6. You guys okay? Jude 1, verse 5, but I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own skin, their own, um, uh, it's an interesting word, they left their own dwelling, some of your Bibles say dwelling place, habitation, their own um, constitution. They left themselves as they were created and changed themselves. He has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Why? What happened? As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner. What? Well, whatever happened with Sodom and Gomorrah happened regarding these angels that didn't keep their proper domain. What is that? Having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after, what does it say? Strange Strange flesh are set forth as an example, the suffering of the vengeance of eternal fire. Strange flesh. The word strange flesh is unauthorized or unsanctioned flesh. Listen, God doesn't want you to commit fornication or adultery. Are you, do you understand what I'm saying? 
God loves you and he doesn't want you to hurt yourself. If you, do, if you do that, you're sinning against God and yourself and others. Are you with me? You got that. I'm not downplaying that. But in doing that, it's not going after strange flesh. We are homo sapiens. Homo, same. We are of the same kind, you and I. We are male and we are female, but we are homo sapiens. You may be a female sapien or you may be a male sapien, but we are sapiens, homo sapiens. This, this is mankind. And when God says, when I make mankind, I will make mankind male and female, that makes up one mankind. It's not animal kind. It's not other kind. It's not alien kind. But according to the Bible, there's a condemnation where angels that have fallen are condemned to this moment because their judgment was they went after flesh that was not permitted for them to have. That's pretty bizarre. You guys want to roll that tape again here? Take a look at if this. You believe we have crashed craft uh, stated earlier. Do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness? Like, how would that be determined? The specific documentation I would have to talk to you in a skiff about. Talk in a secured special location. Um, guys, we have two slides now. That was obviously a video. I think we have something else that is on this page as well, do we not? Yes, this is in a response to that. The gentleman that just got done speaking, he's in the middle. U.S. recovered non-human biologics from UFO crash sites, former intel officer says. Well, here's the interesting thing about that. Many of you had a hard time with that. You said, I, don't, I, I just can't take it. Somebody told me, listen, I believe in Jesus, I believe in the Bible, but that really shook me. If these are fallen angels and the United States, if true, if, if true, has flesh of a non-human thing, then that freaks me out. I said, why does it freak you out? Why should it freak you out? Jesus said, deception's coming. Angels and demons have powers that you and I don't have a clue about. And I'll give you a hint, as I did last time together, when Moses was in confrontation with Pharaoh, Pharaoh's magicians threw down their rods and their staffs became snakes by demonic power. The Bible says that Satan's got the ability to, and his fallen angels, to appear in our world without detection, even as good people, it says, even as angels of light. They can come and deceive. So people, we need to wake up and stop being in our little Sunday school uh, class for a second and realize that deception is coming on a scale that you've never even dreamt of. If Hollywood can do what they do by way of deception, if they can do deep fake, if now you do not have any clue for sure what you're watching is in fact an actual actor or an actual scene, or did that guy really jump out of that airplane or was it on a green screen? You don't even know anymore. How in the world are we going to navigate what's coming? Oh, we'll navigate it all right. We've been given a promise. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit guiding your life, you will fall to the deceptions that's coming. And so when the United States government says we've got flesh that is not human, don't panic. Because fallen satanic powers have got the ability to create some form or manifest some form of bizarre flesh. It's deception. And some of you couldn't handle that. You just said, I can't, I can't take that. What in the world are you going to do when the big stuff happens? <laughs> Think of it. Deceiving. Don't limit the powers of Satan to deceive. We need to wake up. That's what we need to do more than ever. And could there be, by the way, a correlation between end time events and the ancient past. I believe the ancient past is going to revisit us. That's what I believe. 
because Jesus said so. As it was in the days of Noah, as it was at the time of Lot. What does that mean? The bizarre manifestation of the occult, satanic activity, spiritism, a rejection of God and an embracing of gods instead. Jesus said it's going to be like that. I believe that we are in that chapter of man's existence. We're there. By the way, listen, I find it interesting. Now listen, are you guys still tracking with me? Yes. Okay, if you believe in the topic of aliens or not, or alien abductions or not, it, it doesn't matter. Listen, there are those who make that claim. I'm not saying believe them. Could have all been in their head. But there are those who make that claim, and what I found interesting in research this week, I pushed away a lot of stuff that we don't even need to talk about, but one thing was absolutely, perfectly consistent. When, when people under hypnosis talked about their abduction, they all said, I'm not afraid to die. That there's another world out there, and I met those things out there, it's okay. And Jesus is one of them. Not once was it said Buddha is one of them. You, know, you want to know why? Buddha doesn't matter. <laughs> Every single report that brought up a religious conversation put Jesus down. And no other religious leader was mentioned. Muhammad wasn't mentioned. Confucius wasn't mentioned. Joseph Smith wasn't mentioned. Nobody was mentioned but one. Doesn't that tell you something? Yes. Interesting. People claim to have been ab abducted. I don't know if that's true or not. But I do know this. That demonic manifestations can come and tamper with people. Look up. Uh, i got to be careful here. Um, I don't even want to say the words. It's, they, they're not bad words, but they just sound bad. But... Um, I'll say the less offensive word. Go and, and pray, pray before you go, but when you look at what is known as spirit entries, occult activity, and satanic religion, you will quickly come in contact with a word called incubus. Incubus, and there's the other word. Where in satanic worship and satanic activity or where there's demonic strongholds, human beings have experienced physical abuse by invisible creatures. Bites on the back and on the buttocks, uh, claw marks in the, where they can't reach themselves. Unusual pressure or tension on the body during the night. Uh, dreams that they're, they're in a dream, but not in a dream. Images coming through the walls uh, to have some form of physical uh, encounter. He said, Jack, you got to be kidding me. Number one, I'm not kidding you. The satanic world talks about it. And number two, you ought to go on a ride along with us pastors sometime. When you see... 17-year-old girl giving a report of, of what happened and, and her back is bitten up by... Mar by how do you explain that? She said, Jack, you got to be crazy. I understand, maybe I am crazy, but it's what we saw. And it's what plagues her life. By the way, it turned out that in her life, a family member had a series of ancient, highly valued, ancient pagan gods from the Incas... And um, they were in the house. The Bible talks about things like this. See, Jack, you're freaking me out. I'm freaking myself out. So we're in this together. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, for, for we do not wrestle. Again, I wonder how much we believe in the Bible. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Do you really believe that? I mean, think about it. Do you really believe it? I never thought about that before. Mm-hmm. But what do we wrestle against? Against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Oh, what's that? Levels and ranks of demonic, invisible creatures. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bible. 
I can hear my friends saying, brah, better you than me. (laughs) (laughs) 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, our skin, we do not war according to our skin. For the weapons of our warfare are not of our skin, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Christian, you and I are walking around in a universe where you, can, you and I can see one another, but as a Christian, we know that there's a world surrounding us that's invisible. And that's exactly what the Bible teaches. And very few people can handle this. You want Sunday morning church, kids ministry, out you go. And Satan wants you to keep it that way. The moment you wake up to a world that is invisible, well, that's just a little bit too much. In the days of deception, number three is this. What is the world world observing at the present hour, at this present time? And according to the Bible, man's last attempt will be to govern himself in the coming new world that's to be launched. We, We can already see hints of that. I believe a lot of this international government control is leading up to that. I also believe... And I haven't heard anybody say this, but I, I've said it for a long time. I'm going to say it again, and I think, I think it's of God. When you look around and you see how leaderless the world is right now, it's a grand moment for somebody to rush in and save the day, don't you think? You find me a leader in the world that is in power at this moment, apart from maybe Netanyahu, but he could be out at any time. But he's not leading the world. No one's leading the world right now. This is a great moment for somebody to lead the world. But you need a crisis to lead the world. You need like a World War III to to lead the world. You need something. Every leader that has risen up to global status has come through crises. And the Bible says there's going to be such a thing. In 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7, 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 says, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Wow. Wow underway only he that's the holy spirit who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming that's the second coming of christ the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of satan listen up everyone with all power you and i do not know what that means don't you <laughs> Do you understand that? Satan is coming again before the second coming of Christ to earth, and he's going to deceive with all power. You have no idea. I have no idea. Nobody has a clue as to the magnitude of that power. Signs, miracles. Satan is going to deceive people by miracles and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception, there's that word, among those who are perishing, why? Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Verse 11, and for this reason, God will send them strong delusion. You want to be deceived? God's going to let you have it. You can be deceived. That they should be, believe the lie. And I, we don't know what the, the lie is. It's definitely, both in Greek and English, definite article. It's not a lie. It's the lie. What will the lie be? We don't know. It could be that the lie is the Antichrist we know in Second Thessalonians declares himself to be God. Is that the lie? Maybe. Is the lie? Notice that he who hinders will do so until he's taken out of the way, then the wicked one shall be revealed? Is the lie some alien type of explanation to what's happened? We don't know. But a lie is coming. And it is definitive. It will be a lie. What, listen, what, what's the danger of lies? Can you, can you help me out here? What, what, what harm could a lie do? Deceive. Trick mislead does somebody say steal that's good corrupt how about all of the above when a lie is spoken no wonder jesus said when you speak a lie 
You're speaking it of your father, the devil, because he was the father of all lies and he was a murderer from the beginning. How did, listen, how did Satan murder the human race? Told a lie. He didn't use a 45. He didn't use a machete. He used a lie. And Jesus said it's going to be like that in the end. Lies are going to be told. Now here's where it gets exciting. All that was been sleepy time to right now. How sure can we know, do I have five minutes left? Are you absolutely kidding me? That, I rebuke, Lord, rebuke that clock. Oh my gosh. I felt like I just got started. We got to get to, here we go, listen, listen. In the last days, when God speaks to Daniel to write down all the world governing empires until Christ returns... The last world governing empire, listen, is in Daniel chapter 2, beginning at verse 40. And the fourth kingdom, that's the final one. It hasn't come yet. According to the book of Daniel, it's not yet come. The fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything, and like iron that crushes, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others. Verse 41. Whereas you saw the feet and toes partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay. Think about mixing iron and clay together. Uh, Play-doh and metal pieces. It's not going to work very well. So the kingdom shall be partly strong, partly fragile. Verse 43, are you sitting down? As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay... They, personal pronoun, will mingle with the sperm of men. What's going on? AI? Alien sightings? Now, after ever since the 19... Ever since 1933, when the first reports of UFO-type stuff began to surface, and then Roswell, and then this, and then it's quiet, and then there's more, and there's more, and there's a, these abduction reports, and all this stuff, and cr- crop circles, and all this stuff. Just, it's just a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit to maybe some of us sitting here today going, whatever. I mean, let's be honest. Hollywood has just, they've just dazzled us out of our own wits, have they not? No, nothing really impresses us anymore. He said, Jack, this just can't be true. Well, if it is true, look what the Pope's going to do about it. Yep, look what the Pope said. Pope Francis says he would definitely baptize aliens if they asked him to. So the Pope's getting ready. Maybe with that hat of his, he can pick up signals that we're not aware of. It's possible. See, number four is this. What can we expect to see from now on? I think we can expect to see strange. Yes. That's what I'm calling it, strange. And, and uh, strange has already begun. And, and if you want to see strange, sad to say, you can always go to Harvard University where you'll meet this guy. Uh, Abraham Loeb, Avi Loeb. AI encounters of the third kind, Harvard professor with a very active mind believes aliens will make first contact with artificial intelligence, not humans. And uh, let let me read you uh, what what he has to say uh, about this, um, that aliens will not make the first contact uh, with us, but with uh, AI, but instead communicate directly with Earth's artificial intelligence. In a new documentary, God vs. Aliens, Loeb suggests extraterrestrials will send AI drones to Earth rather than occupied vehicles. Loeb proposed that the alien visitations will most likely prove to be some form of AI. That means there's a possibility that their AI could communicate with our AI and bypass humans altogether, which is a bit scary to think about. Loeb suggests that uh, the alien AI may feel a kinship with our AI or our AI may uh, imitate the alien AI and become like them. He said, 
I've always been interested in how first contact would affect the world. It would be a massive thing. We're uh, inching closer and closer to it with recent revelations. In fact, here's one of the recent uh, revelations that they're putting out there. Could Jesus Christ be one of the first, first, wait, first, first, they spelled, why should we read their article? They didn't even spell first right. First alien hybrids, the son of an extraterrestrial and earthly woman. See, that's crazy. I I agree it's crazy, but it's an explanation to some people. What if some creature were to manifest itself and say or announce, hey, Jesus was one of me, one of us. You know how he did the stuff he did? Remember how he levitated across the Sea of Galilee? Watch this. Deception. See, that'll never happen. Did it happen before? Jesus said it's going to happen again. I'm, I'm so out of control here. I'm so upset with the clock. And, no, wait, I know, but listen, children's ministry, try to get them to come back and help your kids next week. They're working, they're working hard over there. Listen, here's the thing. Uh, don't laugh at Greek mythology. Greek mythology came out of ancient beliefs. Notice that most, if not all, most, if not all, Greek mythology and the demigods, if you stop to think for a moment, where Hercules came from, and uh, Zeus, and Orion. What about Poseidon? What about the gods of ancient mythologies of all of the cultures of the world, from Babylonianism all the way to modern time? The mythologies, the mythologies. Isn't it interesting that there's a cohabitation with these beings that visited somebody and that woman got pregnant and she gave birth to Poseidon? That's the story. Isn't that interesting? Genesis beat them to it. It's remarkable. Yeah, I would expect strange from now on. I want to say this before it gets any later or the rapture happens. (laughs) Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and he rose again from the dead exactly as the Bible said he would. He's the eternal God and he predates all of these things no matter what anybody says. And the Bible will be your only defense, but it's the only defense you need about the lies that are coming. I want to give you a flurry of scriptures and then I'll release you to the world. (laughs) I guess you should write this down, number five. How should we be living in the days ahead? D-A-Z-E. I'm going to give you this video and I'm going to give you a a slur, a a flurry of scriptures. I want you to listen, I want you to watch this. This dude is the John the Baptist of what's going on out there right now. He is the man. And I want you to hear what he's saying carefully. It's more about what your intent is. Do you have a pure heart, for lack of a better word? Do you have a clearness in your mind and in your heart? Can you bring your mind and heart into resonance together and invite these civilizations to connect with you in this great purpose, this great journey that we're launching on as a civilization where we are going to become interstellar? Did you hear what he said? Got to invite him in. I watched that thing, and I got to tell you, if I wasn't a Christian, I would have signed up. That guy is so sincere, he's brilliant. And, by the way, his study of E.T. stuff and UFOs led him into the occult, and he is now conducting a, a new version, a 21st century version of seances all over the world, and he's inviting, you can watch it, you can, it's all filmed, he's, in, he's asking his participants to invite the alien visitor in, but you have to be focused and pure of heart. 
That guy is one deceptive dude. He's very believable. I do not recommend people watch that without the Holy Spirit. Luke 21, 34, and then I'll let you go. I mean, not, not that quick, but quick. Luke 21, 34, be careful, Jesus said, because your hearts could be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that day close in on you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say, not you, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, that's in contrast, verse 4, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. This is uh, spiritual laziness. But let us watch and be sober, verse 7. For those who sleep, sleep at night. For those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and of love, and a, as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to attain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Luke 21, 28. You guys want to stand? I'm, I'm really ending. And, and we're gonna, we'll, we won't end with worship. I'm going to use worship time right now. Luke 21, 28. Now, when these things begin to happen, Jesus says, look up, lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. 1 John 4, verse 1, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ, and no wonder. For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing of his ministers, Satan's ministers, also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Colossians 2.8. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, and according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Almost done. Ephesians 4.14. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Finally, Luke 21, 8, and Jesus said, take heed that you do not, take heed that you're not deceived, for many will come in my name saying, I am he, and the time has drawn near, therefore do not go after them. Amen. Church family. The things that are happening and the things that are going to happen that you cannot explain. Your Christian default is this is demonic. This is not from Jupiter or some Martian planet. The things that are going on in the world around me, notice the onslaught is coming from all kinds of different angles. You and I are living in amazing days if you know the truth. Amen. Jesus said he is the truth, and he would set you free. Amen. There's no greater protection than to have the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit as your internal guidance system. Amen. Father, we praise you and thank you. We ask you that we'd go forth today being ready and being equipped now. And it's a strange topic, no doubt, but a topic that is going to come on more and more. That we ought to be a people ready to answer all those who ask us a question regarding these things. We pray in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you guys. You can go.